Hey everybody, um, so today I just kind of wanted to do a video on UDP in LabVIEW. Um, so for those of you who may not know, UDP is a network communication protocol, um, kind of like TCP, except it, it functions entirely differently than TCP. Um, so UDP stands for User Datagram Protocol. So this is a way you can send uh, what's called datagrams across your network. Um, there, some of the kind of key differences, right? So TCP, you send a network packet um, and you wait for a um, acknowledgement back. And even when you go to initialize a connection, right, there's some handshaking going on to establish the connection and then you can transmit back and forth once that's been established. Um, UDP works differently where um, you can send out uh, basically datagrams to certain locations. Um, but there's no acknowledgement, so there's no um, confirmation that anyone's even listening at that port or that the pa or the message was received. Um, and also, um, it, it has some different advantages in terms of being able to multicast and stuff like that, which I'll show here, um, how you can do stuff like that, being able to broadcast, multicast, etc. Um, one of the other things to be careful of is with TCP, right, we transmit a packet and we're waiting for an acknowledgement. And if that acknowledgement doesn't come back, we're you know trying to retransmit, retransmit until we can get that acknowledgement back. Um, and it does make sure that every packet gets sent in order and received in order. Um, with UDP, um, datagrams can arrive mixed up. Um, so you know, I haven't really seen this much, you know, but it is possible, right, that your your datagrams can actually get out of order. And so they get received in a slightly different order than they were sent. So um, just one thing to be cautious of. Um, so if we open our palettes and go to data communication and protocols, um, there is a UDP section. Um, so you can see there's only a couple UDP functions. We have UDP open, multicast, open, read, write, and close. So it's, it's relatively simple. Um, so I'm going to set up both a, a reader and a writer. Um, and these can be bidirectional too. There's no reason that the reader has to only read and the writer has to only write. Um, you can set it up like a client server architecture or a multi-client server architecture or whatever you want. Um, so yeah, just for a simple case, um, we're going to create our um, writer here. So we have to specify the port that we want this UDP connection to be on. So um, it doesn't entirely matter what you select. Um, it, the port has to be available. Um, but yeah, you just need to pick an available port. Um, if you select um, zero um, and you can enter in, there's this service name field here. So I could enter a name, for example, like, you know, UDP demo. Um, and in here I could input zero. Um, it's going to basically create a named service and it's going to automatically assign an available port. And you can see right here on the output side of this function, um, it's going to output which port that was um, assigned. Um, but on the connection side, you can then connect just to this by name. You don't necessarily need to know the port. You just need to know, you know the IP address and this name. So another way you can use it for this demo, I wasn't going to mess with that. Um, we've got a timeout option. And we need a network address. So we need to determine um, where are we sending these uh, packets to. Um, and you can see this is an optional um, field. So not everything needs to be pointed towards the other thing. So for example, in my case, the writer, I'm going to point to the reader. Um, but the reader is not going to be pointed to the writer. So um, one of them has to know how to find the other, essentially. Um, and if you know if both are sending, both could be sending stuff back and forth, then you probably want to point both at each other. Um, one other thing to notice: this is actually an, um, whoops. As you can see, this is actually an unsigned long integer. So the way we can connect to that is we can just drop a string constant, um, and now we're either going to put in the DNS name that we're connecting to or we can put an IP address here. So 
you know, whatever you know about where you're trying to send this data. In my case, I'm just using localhost. It would be the same thing as if I used 127.0.0.1. Um, but yeah, that is uh, how you'll do that. And then um, this actually is in the TCP section of the palettes, but if you go here, there is this string to IP. So if we just drop that down, it'll do the conversion for you automatically. So that's all you have to do on the startup side, um, which is pretty easy. Um, and if we are doing a multicast, it's actually pretty much the exact same thing. So um, we uh, just, and I don't want to go too much into multicast on this. Essentially, multicast is a way that I can write data to a certain port um, that I can use my network routers to basically multicast to any amount of clients. So I can write to a single location, but any amount of clients can be reading that data. So, you know, I could have anywhere from one client to, you know, hundreds of clients that could all be reading that same UDP data. Um, so I, I really haven't found many, I, I rarely use multicast. Um, I have used it on occasion, um, but typically, right, I'm usually just doing like a one-to-one -one type thing. Um, but multicast is available as well. Um, and as a side note, um, UDP can also do broadcast, um, which means it sends it to everything on the network that's listening on the, the port that you specify. So if you want to do a broadcast, you would just change um, this IP address to be like 255.255.255.255. Um, and that's basically going to give you that UDP broadcast. So it's just going to say... I'm not sending this to a specific IP address. I'm sending that to everything on the network that could be listening on a certain port. So, um, yeah. Um, okay, so this is our writer. So we're going to drop a UDP right here. Um, we can connect this up. Um, so we have a couple options here, right? We have our timeout, um, data in, um, the address we're writing to, and the uh, port or service name that we're writing to. Um, I also want to just put this in a loop because we're just going to continuously send packets. Um, so our address is just going to be localhost. Um, our port or service name. So this is different than the port that we specified here. So this port here is going to be our writer port, uh, basically the port that we're opening on this application. This is going to be the port that whatever we're connecting to is listening on. So um, this will be different. Again, though, it could be anything. You just need to make sure that you match on your other code what you're using here. So let's just do 65322. So just going one number up. Um, and we're going to connect this through. Um, yeah, and we'll add a UDP close at the end of that. Um, sweet. And then for our data, we're just going to make this um, really simple. Let's just send a random number. Um, so we'll get the random number function. And it does work with strings. So we will, whatever data type you're using, and you can send anything you want, um, but you will need to convert it to a string. And on the other end, you will need to unconvert from a string. We will add a button here and then let's just add a delay. So we're going to send data every 100 milliseconds. So that's basically it. Um, you can see and if you've watched my TCP video um, you might remember um, we had to do something a little tricky to basically define how much data for the reader to read. So we would send a packet that was a fixed length that basically said hey, this is how much data I'm sending, and then it would transmit the actual data. Um, UDP works differently, where it's just waiting to catch a datagram, and that datagram could be any size. So you don't need to do all of that kind of handshaking um, to make sure that the right size, uh, you know, is the right amount of data is being read back. So, um, yeah, one thing you don't necessarily have to worry about. Um, and another perk with UDP is it's a lot faster than TCP because there's not all the handshaking and the acknowledgments and all of that. Um, so you can do things quicker with UDP. There's just no guarantee that every packet's being received or that they're being received in order necessarily. So yeah, this is our writer. 
Um, so now let's go create a reader over here. So we're gonna go open back up our UDP palette. UDP palette. Um, we're gonna do an open. Uh, so we need to specify the port we're gonna open on this. So I'm gonna use that 65322 that we specified right here that we're writing to. Um, and that's it. That's all I'm gonna connect there. Um, then I'm gonna drop a read there and a close there. So let us drop a loop around that. Um, sweet. Um, so there's a couple options when we do a UDP read. So there's this max size. So this is the size of the datagram that you're trying to receive. And if your da the datagram coming over is bigger than that, it's not it's going to throw an error at you. So I've sent like images using UDP before, and I had to really increase this limit to a pretty big number. I don't remember exactly what, um, just because images are big, especially if you're getting, you know, large size image with, you know, high resolution, um, they can get very, very big. So um, depending on what data you're sending, um, you may need to increase this number. Um, for me, I'm just sending a very small message. So 548 is plenty, plenty big. Um, there also is a timeout. So how long are we going to wait till we get a, a packet before this function moves on? Um, and it's just going to output the data we got right here. Um, and one other cool thing is this also outputs the address and the port where this packet came from. So you can output these and see where they are coming from. Um, but yeah, um, so then we're just going to do a little conversion um, here. So we're going to convert this to a float. And then let's drop a chart here so we can see our numbers update. Um, yeah. And then we'll just add a control so we can stop our reader. So this is basically all you need. Um, and one other thing I'll show. Um, so let's just create a indicator here. Sorry, it's not super clean. But um, so as you can see, I can just start running my writer. And it's just chugging along, right? It's writing data. So like I said, UDP is not actually checking that anything is even listening where I'm sending the data. It's just sending the data. There's no guarantee that anyone's listening, which in this case right now, there is nobody listening. Um, there's also no guarantee that it's being captured. Um, so, you know, I'm just sending packets along, um, you know, and it's, you know, oblivious to whether this is running or not. Now I can go open this up. And now you can see I'm getting this data coming across. So I'm sending my random data through UDP um, being captured and received on the other side. Um, so pretty simple. I can stop my reader and you can see this could care less, right? It's completely unaffected by the my reader, whether it's connected or not. Um, and same thing if I'm doing a multicast, you know, I could care less, right? Whether you know, anyone's listening at all or a thousand people are listening. So um, kind of one of the cool things with UDP, I use this a lot for when I have really complex systems with a lot of stuff going on in it. Um, I'll set like a little UDP um, module in there basically that collects a bunch of the current data. And it might not even be data that's available on the UI. It could be lower level stuff, like more intermediate stuff than that. And it will just take all of that data build it into like a cluster, flatten that to a string, and then it'll send it out over UDP, you know, every, maybe like every couple seconds or something like that, every so often. Um, and the nice thing with that is it doesn't actually care if anything's listening or not, because in most cases, nothing is listening at all. But sometimes I'll open up maybe like a little debug GUI that is, will start, then start capturing those packets. And then I can go start viewing you know, stuff live in the software. So a really simple and cool way to get information. And I can just set it to constantly just be outputting those datagrams, you know, at a fixed frequency. And it doesn't matter if something's connected or not. I don't have to do all of this like, okay, try, you know, listen, listen, listen. Okay, something's connected. Now start transmitting. You know, I can just say, hey, every, you know, 
three seconds, send out a datagram with the latest data. And, you know, when I have the debug GUI open, then it'll catch those datagrams and, you know, I can do whatever I want with it. And then also that debug GUI can be either local or remote, which is kind of cool, right? So I can set it up to do either or. So, um, but yeah, that's pretty much UDP in LabVIEW. Thank you guys for tuning in. Canon Controls is your gateway to mastering LabVIEW. Dive into programming for data acquisition, industrial communications, and manufacturing automation. Explore how to enhance your projects with cybersecurity best practices. Join the journey to elevate your skills and secure your systems with every episode.